Hello and good morning. Now, it's important to begin the brand new week with the right amount of energy. That's why we're right here home early with that contagious vibe. Mm. And uh, we intend to spread as much of it as we can. Yeah, all you have to do is join us on this journey. Yeah. And I'm uh, hoping that you spend most part of your uh, weekend resting. I yeah. uh, would like to challenge you to get out of your comfort zone and do something new today. Mm -hmm. You need to expand those horizons. And that pink is popping. Mary, really girl, really ah, ah, <laughs> like you're just like looking so bright and beautiful this morning. It's Thank great you. to see you, girl. Welcome well, back, it's Mary. It's great to be back. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> now, it's a brand new week. And uh, now you have to remember this is the number one family breakfast show on TV. And we're here to help you get off to a great start. Yeah. Now, it's actually amazing starting your mornings with us. Mm. Uh, and it's been almost three wonderful years yeah. creating memorable uh, moments every single day of the show almost three we're almost there wake up nigeria will be three years old on friday mm. the 17th of july that's uh, very very nice very amazing mm. uh that's uh, what how many shows Woof. almost 800 oh loads in fact so many shows most of them are online for you to see if you want to go recap and see all the great stuff we've done we would like to celebrate it with our viewers and uh, we're doing that in quite a few ways mm. this friday oh, well. is going to be great yeah it's going to be nice now we have an exciting edition of the show prepared for you mm -hmm. it's going to be three whole hours of absolute entertainment with your friendly anchors. Yes, so three is the magic word this week on the show. Wake Up Nigeria is going to be three exciting stuff. We have more details coming for you as the show progresses. Yeah. Now, of course, uh, we know that Mary and Mike are going to be doing this with us. So mm. You've seen Mary. Yeah. And uh, my name is Yomi Hoping. And I'm Titi Laya Oing. So now, if you have to move around, you can always stream this show live on tvcentertainment.tv or on Facebook at TVC Connect. You can also send in your comments across all our social media platforms, uh, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Uh, use the hashtag Wake Up Nigeria on TVC. Yes, so share with us your favorite segment on the show. And uh, possibly even your favorite presenter. I know it's me. Don't worry. I know it's me. You know, just tell them it's me. Yeah. And uh, you can tell us exactly what you love about them. Mm. <laughs> Don't forget, uh, our app is available for download uh, both on the Android and iOS store. This app lets you watch us anywhere you are in the world. Mm -hmm. And it's really important to have access to this show all day, every day. Uh, and of course, that means you need to subscribe to our YouTube channel. TVC Entertainment is the name. Make sure you subscribe and have notification bell on so you can catch all our brand new videos as soon as they drop. Guess what? On Fridays, we also have uh, something a little bit uh, extra for you guys. Uh, Wake Up Nigeria Extra. And that is usually live mm -hmm. on Instagram, yes. believe it or not. So check us out this Friday. It's going to be very nice. 2.30 p.m. is the time. All right. So let's tell everyone what's happening today. Now it's a brand new week and we only to be surrounded with positive light. True day, you know what? It's going to be starting us off on a positive note. I think. I'm going to say something that sounds mean, but it really isn't. Somebody who said, I know the reason why he was treating me like this is because I'm so fat. Okay. Right. For the right mix of Monday motivation, we've got Larry Olushola, founder and chief catalyst at the Olushola Larry uh, Academy, coaching academy. And they're going to be joining us to talk about environment and relationships. Now, if you're an entrepreneur or a wannabe entrepreneur, Olua Tobi Ali will be here for you. Today, we'll be treating passion equal business. I personally look forward to this one. And uh, hmm, all you entrepreneurs out there need to stay tuned for that. Finally, we're going to be having actor and businessman Michael Godson, uh, someone who's been in the industry for over 10 years. And he's going to be sharing with us uh, you know, what he's been up to uh, during this lockdown. Mm -hmm. so Monday I... magic, people. Monday magic. This magic Happy you're saying. Weekend. Yes. <laughs> which the, but when you kept going, three is the magic word. You know <laughs> what I just kept thinking <laughs> of? <laughs> Chelsea. Uh, <laughs> wow, it is not magical Mary. for them right now. You <laughs> went there. <laughs> it, it was just what came to my head. <laughs> and I was there. like, three is the magic <laughs> word, really? <laughs> Well, you have a point. You know, yeah, in, spite, in spite of, uh, <laughs> yes, they've been catching 3-3. Three, three. The other scored 3 the <laughs> The good thing is that because of Leicester's loss yesterday, Chelsea does have a chance or yeah. they mm. do have their, their destinies in their hands. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing like that when you don't have to yeah. 
uh, permutate and combine and be thinking, ah, if that guy lose and they score one, they score two. Yeah. You know how we do when Nigeria when we go to walk up? <laughs> we lose our first match. They will now sit down. <laughs> See, <laughs> uh, Argentina will beat Greece. <laughs> if we win the second one and draw the third one. <laughs> 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 we'll draw the second one. They will now say, ah, Argentina will score Greece five goals. We, we've considered four. Mm. If they remove one, we'll be plus one. Mm. You know, no, no. Yes, so they, it's always it's always cool whenever a team has a destiny in their hands. Yeah. And, uh, so it's, Chelsea, yeah. you know, good for It's them. funny how some Nigerian fans who claim they hate mathematics, yet they are very good at calculating. Uh, when those things happen, they're geniuses, really. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's interesting you should say that because I think we should really calculate how many times we've uh, con gone for makeup, how many times we've dressed up for this show, how many times we've had a chef, how many times. So I would like for people to pick three of their favorite segments mm. and, and tell us about them because three is the magic number for, for this, this week, year. right? Mm -hmm. So three of their favorite segments are on the show. If you could pick that out and tell us why exactly you like them. And then maybe three things we could do in the next one year, mm -hmm. you never know, mm -hmm. uh, on Wake Up Nigeria that could make the show even better. We would so love some to feedback, hear. feedback yeah. from, mm -hmm. from, from some of the viewers, that, that would be nice. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, so I guess we're going to put that on social media for yeah, them. Yeah, we to, should. Yeah, we should. To, to so three things that are key about Wake Up Nigeria for you. Uh, that's three segments for you that are the best for you. And tell us how we could make it better. I would love to hear that because mm. over the past one year, you know, a lot of things did change, you know, because of uh, COVID-19. We had to make so many adjustments and all that. Um, and the show did have to adjust a little. But in my opinion, mm. in many ways, it proved that we can only get better. It seemed like the streets uh, of Lagos were really busy this weekend. I'm not yeah, sure. They were uh, quite busy. Yeah. Um, traffic in different uh, different locations. So, some some areas were actually free, but not yeah. all every area. Some people some started, they've started doing free. parties. So, so Really? Yes. They started doing weddings. So yeah. some people yeah. 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 Really? started. Yes. So they just, they just, they'll be trying, they'll be trying governments once more. Uh -uh. Yeah. They just, they, just, they just nudge the government. Yeah. For real? That's true. I actually saw day, a photo they... of people with plates of food <laughs> wearing face shields. Wow. <laughs> and I was just wondering how they were even planning to eat Look, the food. I, I <laughs> feel like things are sort of, uh, pe people are forcing things to get back to normal. Yes. Mm. Even though, you know, you, you should still practice social distancing yeah. and, and yeah. all of that. But they're, not, they're no longer doing it mm. like they should. Mm. You know. it's, it's in your hands. So. And the numbers are? Increasing, increasing, yeah. and scary. Yeah. But anyway, um, we have to mm -hmm. take the news. Mm -hmm. And uh, doctors employed by the Lagos State government are embarking on a three-day warning strike from tomorrow. A chairman of the Medical Guild of uh, in Lagos, Dr. Oluwajimi Shodipo, says the industrial action is due to the expiry of the ultimatum given to the state government, stating that 70% of their demands must be met. This includes erasing the wage disparity between the federal and Lagos state doctors. Dr. Shudipo also uh, said the COVID-19 hazard and inducement allowances approved by the federal government have not been affected by the Lagos state government. He says, quote, the doctors working in the COVID isolation centers are still being owed two month salaries, which have remained unpaid at the moment. They are also being unceremoniously disengaged without recourse to their welfare, end quote. Right now, we understand that the doctors and the representatives of the state government uh, were currently uh, discussing some of the issues raised. Chairman of the Medical Guild in Lagos, Dr. Oluwajimi Shuripo, confirmed this in a phone conversation with our correspondents uh, last night. Now, we're going to bring you details of the outcome of that meeting in subsequent bulletins. In the meantime, uh, 56 patients have been discharged from the Lagos uh, isolation facilities. Uh, Governor Babajide Songwolu says they are 12 females and 44 males, including nine foreign nationals. He said the patients were discharged after full recovery and testing negative twice for COVID-19. This brings the total number of managed and discharged patients in the state to 1,897. Let's take you to the secretary to the Delta State Government, Chiedu Abie, who has been discharged also from an isolation center in Asaba after testing negative for COVID-19. Mr. Abie, who spent 21 days at the facility, thanked Nigerians for their prayers over his recovery and that Governor Ifai Okoa and his family. And this brings the number of discharged persons in the state to 583, while 31 deaths have been recorded. 
Uh, the government says it remains committed to minimizing the spread of the virus, urging citizens to comply with safety protocols. In Kwara State, uh, the deputy governor and chairman of the Technical Committee on Coronavirus, Coyote Alabi, has again called on the people of the states to always adhere strictly to COVID-19 safety protocols. Mr. Alabi, who made the call shortly after some of his aides tested positive for COVID-19, warned that the disease is a real and present danger that requires serious caution. The deputy governor also tested negative for COVID-19. According to a statement by his chief press secretary, Mudupe Joel, the deputy governor said his COVID-19 positive aides have been admitted to COVID-19 infectious center, Sobi Specialist Hospital in Ilori. Now to the north, where speakers of state houses of assembly in the region have dismissed doubts by many that coronavirus does not exist. The speakers rose from a meeting in Kaduna, the region's capital, where they applauded efforts of the government to check the spread of the disease. The speakers are demanding the establishment of testing centers in local government areas across the country. Insecurity in the region was also discussed by the speakers. They've tasked the federal government to double efforts at keeping the region safe. Speakers unanimously agreed that COVID-19 is real. We also appeal to the federal government to provide testing equipment for all states and local governments in Nigeria for effective testing. The forum expressed their concern on the insecurity in the northern part of Nigeria while appreciating the efforts of the president, governors, and security agencies so far. We appeal to the federal government to redouble its efforts in tackling the security situation in northern Nigeria. Back here in Lagos, the police have rescued a U.S. citizen who was detained in Lagos for more than a year by one Chukwebuka Obiaku, a Nigerian she met on Facebook. A police spokesman, Frank Mba, disclosed this on Sunday, where he revealed that Mr. Obiaku lured the victim into the country under the pretext of love and deceitfully married her on the 15th of May, 2019. He also forcefully collected and took control of her credit and debit cards, as well as the operation of her bank accounts. Upon investigation, it was revealed that the suspect is a graduate of business administration and management and an internet fraudster who has defrauded many Nigerians. He will be prosecuted when the investigations are concluded. And over in the U.S., the state of Florida accounts for a huge number of new COVID-19 cases registered yesterday with a record 15,299 new infections in 24 hours. Uh, the state with just 7% of the U.S. population surpassed the previous daily record held by California. Florida, which began lifting coronavirus restrictions in May, has proved vulnerable due to the terrorism and an elderly population. Its figures eclipse the worst daily rates seen in New York in April. Florida also registered an additional 45 deaths. Well, that's it, uh, the news updates for this hour. Sports is next after this break. <laughs> well, now, Monday, July 13th, 2020, we're going to be taking a look at the newspaper headlines, starting with The Guardian. Yeah, The Guardian has this headline. It says here, federal government states borrow more, crowd out private sector. Real sector faces tougher times. Economists see more value in local bonds. Now, the story starts there on the cover and wraps up on page six. There are some infographics there for you to see uh, based on Nigeria's debt profile from 2014 till date. And a uh, distribution pie chart showing how Nigeria accumulated 17.4 trillion naira debt in six years. Now, that's a lot of debt. Um, now, we have also on the cover of the Guardian, Nigerians fight for economic balance as recession beckons. Akbabio Nune uh, in fierce exchanges over NDDC's alleged 40 billion naira fraud. It also says here, resign now, Undo Deputy Governor tells Assembly Speaker. 
And I don't tele, tele guide National Assembly, uh, says Buhari. Just under the infographic there, it says, blame Tinumbu Akonde, fire me if Southwest loses 2023 presidency. It'll be unfair to blame them alone, says YCE. We need restructuring, not presidency, Okoromu says here. And uh, next president should be Igbo, Ik Aka Ikenga insists. That's what we have on the cover of The Guardian. All right, let's check out the nation. Why US, UK, others are monitoring Magu's probe. Concern about allegations, probe, process, fair hearing, anti-graft campaign, and then 550 billion naira recovered fund in TSA, says EFCC bus. And a few other uh, riders there. More dust in Ondo over Deputy Governor Ajayi. And uh, you can find the writers to that story. The story is on page 12. Up here, bankers, 25 billion naira revival pill for national theater. 10,000 jobs coming. I like that. And leader of one million boys gang shot dead in Ibadan. Wow, they have a leader. And a $2.8 billion uh, AKK project rekindling economic hope. Ijo Itzekiri threaten government. And finally, on the cover of The Nation this morning, Edo 2020, why Ize Yamu will be elected governor by Obadan. And Obaseki deserves re-election, says the head of service. You'll find that story on page seven. All right, I have the Punch newspaper with me now. And it says, seized properties cornered by top EFCC officials. Magus friends, says panel. Says suspended commission boss, failed to account for 332 recovered houses. All allegations are lies concocted to tarnish Ma Magu's image, says council. And uh, we have some photo photos there. Photo story talks of Okwako Bridge uh, on the Adigbe Okwako Road in uh, Abeokuta, Ogun State. And uh, shows a, a basically a bridge that has been decimated by the rain. Uh, and speaking of rain, there's, there's been some heavy flooding in, in Japan as well, in, uh, in major parts of Asia due to the downpour, and it does seem to be spreading. Uh, it says also here, Lagos doctors begin strike over wage disparity, others. Fraudster detains American lady in Lagos Hotel, defrauds her of 18.5 million naira. Federal government commends air peace as UK denies airline landing permit. And uh, federal government orders power projects, contractors back to sites. We didn't campaign for Buhari while with Jonathan, uh, says Dasuki. And I'll wrap with this one. It says petrol subsidy gulped 101.6 billion naira in three months, says NMPC. That's what we have on the cover of The Punch. Well, that looks like all that we can take on the newspaper headlines for this hour. And yep. uh, we're going to be taking a quick break and be right back. With us, it's time for the Lagos traffic updates on Wake Up Nigeria. Now, the rains are here and you have to be extremely careful uh, just how you manage your movement, which is why we are here to ensure that you get to your intended destination on time and, of course, safe and sound. Okay, so um, we're going to start off with uh, Abuleba to Mushin bus stop this morning. Uh, let's take a look at that route right now. Uh, I'm just going to tell you the areas uh, to look out for traffic. As it is, uh, by the time you get to Ileko bus stop, that's where you're going to experience your first uh, bit of traffic. Uh, it's, uh, it, afterwards, you probably not uh, encounter traffic until you're approaching Yanopaja. That's just before uh, Pleasure bus stop. And it goes on that way until you're past Yanopaja, after which it becomes light. And then uh, approaching Dokwemu again, just before you get to the bridge, uh, there's a, a gridlock there that lasts you for as long as you get to Ikeja. So as soon as you're past the Ikeja axis, uh, you're 
really good to go uh, until you get to Osho, the access, just as you get to the arena. Uh, that's where you would experience another uh, bit of traffic. Uh, so this one is actually a gridlock as well. But as soon as you're past the Osho, the access, uh, heading to motion is just uh, pockets of light traffic here and there. And then you, of course, be fine. Now, I'm pretty sure the guys have uh, traffic updates for me. Uh, so I'd like to know what you guys have. All right. Uh, so uh, usual traffic at the at the various uh, major stops, especially coming into Lagos uh, this morning. But an hour ago, at about 5.14 a.m., um, okay, well, just over an hour ago, uh, traffic chief NG, a broken down truck uh, spotted close to Odo uh, Iyalaro Bridge, Maryland. Sad thing is that it's parked without sea caution sign and cars could run into it. Mm. So it's, uh, he's also tagging at photo Lasma to help uh, to avoid tragedy. Mm. So it's parked in a funny way uh, around Maryland and it, you know, that definitely would have caused a bit of traffic. Uh, that might be the reason why there's a bit of gridlock in that area uh, this morning because I noticed, I noticed mm. that on, on, online. So mm. broken down truck is causing some impediments around Maryland. Uh, they need to work on that. Mm. Okay. Uh, Titi, Mike, do you have any updates for me? Actually, so uh, not all the handles are tweeting at this time as at right now, uh, but I did see that same tweet uh, on the truck. Uh, okay. It's being reposted by other traffic uh, handles as well. Okay. Uh, and being a truck in the middle of the road, everyone needs to just open their eyes yeah, in yeah. any case, whether there's a truck there or not. Just. Just keep just uh, uh, be, be, just be careful yeah. al along the way, especially when the roads are suddenly free. Yeah, you you might be tempted to just speed up. Mm. So just yeah. be careful and keep an eye out. All right. Yeah. Well, the good part is that mm. despite all of this traffic mm. talk, uh, Beja to the island, especially if you're going to CMS, is actually still less than an hour. Mm. So you might want to set out now. Now is the best time to do so. And right. talking about setting out, I know we have uh, some gist that we need to <laughs> really to trash out. So uh, I'm just going to put a pause to the traffic update right now and join the guys in the kitchen. All right, and we can't wait to have you, Mary. Mm. Uh, now, there's something that's been all over the internet for not just the past weekend, but um, the week before, talking about Jada Pinkett Smith and Will Smith's uh, Red Table interview. Oh, oh yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, there are a lot of different opinions on what exactly was going on. Uh, yeah. This is what, four or five years ago now? And so that question of whether is, is anybody's business now is, is the first one that comes to me. Like, is it, is it really our business to talk about this? But they've come out now mm -hmm. to also put out a, a red table discussion. They, they published it, basically broadcasted themselves. So uh, what do you think, Mary? <laughs> you know what, before I give my opinion, yeah. which, uh, because I'm such a fan of many of these folks, yeah. not necessarily a fan, but I follow their stories, mm. I, I dare say I can give you like the history, yeah. <laughs> but first we need to take a look at it clear, yeah, uh, sure. yeah, yeah. Some, something from the Red Table Talk itself. Hmm. Four and a half mm -hmm. years ago, yeah, started a, there. I think it was about four and a half, four years ago, mm -hmm. um, started a friendship with August. Mm -hmm. and we actually became really, really good friends. Mm -hmm. And it all started with him just needing some help, mm -hmm. you know, me wanting to help his health, his mental state. Because for me, that was the thing. When, I, when, um, when Aug first came around, he was, he was really, really sick. sick. He was really, you know? really sick, yeah. And the outpouring for him from our family was uh, initially about his health. Yeah. And I mean, we found all those different resources, mm -hmm. you know, to help pull him through. Mm -hmm. And from there, you know, you and I were going through a very difficult time. Yeah. And we decided... I was done with your you, ass. Yeah, you kicked me to I the curb. I was done with you. Yeah. <laughs> We Marriages have that, though. Yeah, Marriages have that. Yeah, we basically, mm -hmm. we broke up. We decided that we were going to separate for a period of time, and you go figure out how to make yourself happy, and I'll figure out how to make myself happy. Well, at that particular point in time, it was indefinite. Yeah, I really felt like we could be over. Yeah. Know? All right. <laughs> so, yeah. so mm. <laughs> <laughs> this feels like a Ross and Rachel situation here. Who watches Friends? Yo. Oh, yeah. They were on a break. 
<laughs> Hello, it happened while they were on a break. Mm. So, does it still count? Yomi uh, looks like he's about to quote. He's about to quote. So I just want to hear what he has to say. <laughs> this is Ross and Rachel all over again. You know. Look, look, look. I, I mean, <laughs> while it's even none of our business to be talking about this, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, because it's just, you know, and, you know, this is the coffee table, so we bring all manners of, yeah. of matters here, right? So it's, it's nice. Mm. So look, um, as far as I'm concerned, these are celebrities. Yeah. You know, they live their lives on the red carpet, mm -hmm. and what we see. Uh, so there's more to it mm -hmm. that I feel um, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. they're not talking about mm -hmm. on Will Smith's side and even on, exactly. on, on Jada's, Jada's side. side yeah. So what they're trying to do basically is a PR... Control the narrative. Yeah, <laughs> control the narrative. <laughs> Let's manage the fallout and the damage yeah. because, mm -hmm. you know, Everybody is, the whole family is investing in Will Smith right now because, you know, he's in his 50s. Mm -hmm. So let's ensure that he has that clean image. Uh, that yeah. clean image. So he comes out <laughs> clean from this whole thing. Yeah. So they're just trying to manage it, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's what I feel. So, but I, I'm, I also like the fact that they both came out mm. and they're talking about it. And yeah. look, like a conversation is going on mm. in that. Uh, there are some other things that. You know, I looked at that. Is that personal? Like what? Like what? <laughs> yeah, no, we'll like talk body about, language. Uh, we'll what? talk about that, but I, I want you guys to also have your, okay. your own take. Yeah. Uh, you, you know, I was <laughs> telling you guys about their history together. I'm just going to go straight to the point regarding this particular one. These folks have loved each other since like mm. time immemorial. Mm. Um, just about uh, two, three years ago, Jada herself came out to talk about she, how she used to be a sex addict, thinking mm -hmm. sex could like, fix every problem. Mm. Uh, so then you look at the fact that um, there were you know, new stuff about the mm. possibility of uh, Will cheating back then. Yeah. And then you try to put two and two together. She's a mm. sex addict. It's cheating. It's not giving her as much as she wants, obviously. Mm -hmm. And then you see that, okay, that's already <clears throat> causing friction in some places. And then you know the kind of um, relationship they have. They, have this, they, they don't have an open relationship, contrary to what people think. But they have this live and let go kind of attitude. Like, okay, nobody wholly pass. Do mm. what you like. What counts is our marriage. In our fact, they family, don't even refer yeah. to themselves as married couples anymore. They yeah. actually call themselves life partners, partners. Mm. which means that no matter what the other person does, yeah. We are We're still going to ride through it. Mm. And mm. that is what has helped Jada through They the call themselves times. what? Life partners. Life partners. So, <laughs> it's, so, you know what, Mike, I would love <laughs> to hear what Mike thinks. So, by, like, I see, I'll go, I'll go the way Yomi said. If we, f the, I, I, I wouldn't say media now. Social media has found a way to sensationalize this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it's something that happens almost everywhere. And mm. it's something that uh, should not really be of concern. Look. Before now, they had said at different times that, in fact, even while this red table discussion came up, what he stated was that, look, I was done with you. Mm, yeah, they did he not, said it. It wasn't even, it wasn't a break. Yeah. It wasn't yeah, a break. Like, a mm -hmm. break is, okay, let's see, let's go apart. No. Exactly. He said, in fact, I remember one time when I was watch, uh, watching the, the red table talk, I was, yeah. and she said, she asked him, why didn't you divorce me? Mm. Um, mm. Okay, no, he, he, I think she asked, why didn't you divorce me? And she, and she, now, she now said, was it because it was going to be expensive? Wow. Because they had already, <laughs> Invested they were so done much. with each other. Yeah. They were done. They were done. Mm. And as wow. at that time, they were done. They are adults. Mm. Yeah. You do whatever you want to do. That, that is it. Yeah. So because of, so. We, so they so, came so back together. The way to, you yeah. And then and suddenly, suddenly they come back together, there's judgment. And then one dude wants to release a song or wants to do something. <laughs> Baba starts, exactly. Baba yes. starts reminiscing as and all of that. So it's not as... Every, we just we, we just need something, mm. or people, the public just need something to chew on. Yeah. And that's what has happened. Nothing, yeah, exactly, there's nothing exactly. there, man. Nothing. But, but what, what is upsetting me now is that they're chewing Jada like crazy. Uh, and, no, it's and on both sides. The, are think. you sure? No, so they're, they're, yeah, she's, they're she's on the chopping block. Yeah. Jada like crazy. No, it's, it if, it was like a, if it was cool Will guy. that had been caught, oh, people would be like, ah, bad guy, <laughs> bad guy. Ah, the baby's hot. She's hotter than Jada. That's why I'm like, wow. Jada is hot. Jada is you hot. Know, you know, people tend to look at Jada like, mm. oh, she's, she's all that. Uh -uh. She's super. She's got Will. Mm -hmm. The guy so many girls mm. want. And that's why they're going after her. But the truth is... <laughs> Every marriage has its challenges. Hmm. It's unfortunate, just as um, Yomi said, they are celebrities. That's why this is coming out and is being blown like this. Mm. There are several people that go through worse things in their marriages. Yeah. And then there's still this um, patriarchal thoughts for many people where you believe, even if things like that are supposed to happen, it yeah. shouldn't come from a woman. 
It's exactly. a good thing a Will Smith pointed out the fact that they were as good as done. Yeah. yeah. And then I see some people say, okay, even if it's, there was somebody that had time to be analyzing. Yeah. And then someone was like, but they were done. The guy said, uh -huh. even if they were done, she's not a woman. Can't she hold herself? Ah, and I was like, ah, wow. <laughs> really? No, honestly. <laughs> and, I, and I realized that there yeah, was, exactly. it was more of patriarchal exactly. thoughts. Yeah. It's exactly not really about what, what she, she did. It's exactly really sad. Exactly what she said. That's and it. that is it. Like, yeah. it is not, it is no issue. Exactly what you said. Mm -hmm. What do you mean by, okay, um, she should hold herself? What do you mean? They were done. Mm -hmm. And she was, she's an adult they were seen together so it's not like uh yeah, they were seen they, together they were on red carpets, red carpets yes. went to the oscars together yeah. okay that's talking uh, about uh, jada and, and august so yeah so all of that had happened even though yes, they never came out officially to say that mm. say that they were in a relationship yeah. or anything yeah. like yeah. that i wish they didn't need get, to and when when will and jada came back together maybe he just opted not to ask yeah. which is sometimes is a good thing okay it was a break, so I'm not even going to pry into yeah. your whatever you were doing uh, <laughs> when we were on a break. So let's just move on, you know. So I guess that's also what they're However, trying to do. However, another angle people mm -hmm. are using to attack Jada is this guy came to you broken. Aha. Oh. Now, Apparently, that I wanted to she's that. a herbalist and he was supposed to be oh, like wow. a Is he a herbalist? No, no, no. no. So no. basically, oh, okay. he came with some mental <laughs> mental challenges. Yeah. Uh, I want to say mental. I'm not saying he was mad. No, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying that he had some emotional things he yeah. was dealing with. Yeah. And he was looking to someone as, uh, in a quote, a motherly figure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to speak with and, you guys and are then taking this thing too far, man. A, see that was what somebody said but well, that's what he said that. it doesn't mean that that was of the case his mothers give comfort you know exactly no, so she gave him comfort saying that she was, i don't understand that she took her him. him no she did not take her she gave hey, him comfort so making it, it seem like a uh, look they could have you could have said that because of he wants to get he wants to get he wants to curry some favor you could have said that and emotional issues or girl you don't know we don't know you could have just seen a fine babe all right let's go down you know these hard mental issues i have an album coming out of that by my album but when you leave that matter there's nothing there johnny they were on a break yeah all right stay with us <laughs>
as we make every minute count. Mm, this entire show is specially prepared just for you to lift your mood and get you ready for the week ahead. Yeah, we remain your number one breakfast show uh, in Nigeria. And the show, of course, is called Wake Up Nigeria. Yes, yeah, so remember, as you're about to go about your day, keep all the necessary hygiene standards at their highest. Please, please, please wash your hands very well. Carry around an alcohol-based hand sanitizer. And of course, wear your face masks while you're in public, please. It's the law. It is, it is. There's apparently a fine now. Oh, okay. Uh, quite a heavy fine if you're caught without one. So very important, please uh, yeah. keep your face masks on. So the uh, certain people don't take advantage of mm -hmm. that. Yes, indeed. Collect some serious money from you. Anyway, uh, make sure you stay safe today and uh, throughout the week. My name is Yomi Uope. And I'm Titi Laya So Remember, you can stream the show live at cbcentertainment.tv and, of course, on Facebook at TVC Connect. Yeah, you can also sub subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, on uh, TVC Entertainment. When you search for it, that's where you'll find it. And you can see past videos of the show and different interviews that we've done yeah. over the past three years. Yeah, three years. Imagine this week is especially dear to us because we're counting down to our third anniversary on Friday. Mm, we we'll promise you uh, this is where you want to be throughout this week mm. uh, because the biggest things are, are coming to our viewers. Yes, we want to celebrate you guys, especially those of you who were around since 2017 with yes, us. Indeed. Wow. Yeah, 2017. Goodness me, you don't want to miss out on any of those goodies, I can tell you. For the right uh, kind of motivation on a Monday, Lanry Olushola is back with us for the second week. And this time, he's going to be joining us to talk about uh, environment and relationships. Now, if you're an entrepreneur or you want to become one, Oluwa Tobi Ali will be here for you. Today, he's going to be treating passion equal business. Yeah. <laughs> so, Mike, chasing mm. up the, on that conversation that you were mm. having mm. about uh, uh, Bezos mm. and yeah. Bill Gates and Bezos' wife and all these people making <laughs> billions, uh, I just want to say that, and even uh, Elon Musk mm. also has been has quite grown uh, in a few in a few billions mm -hmm. uh, over the past three or four months or so. Um, uh, Mike Zuckerberg said something, mm. uh, Mark Zuckerberg said something. Uh, people don't care what you say, mm. they care what you build. Mm. Okay. These guys have been building for, yeah. some of them three decades, decades yeah. some of them two decades, some of them maybe about 15, 18 years. Mm. And it's what they've built that suddenly is now yeah. pulling all these resources the towards thing, them. Yeah. The way they are going about this, you see, eh, we've had apps like, if you remember when we had apps like To Go, we had High Five and all the rest, yeah. right? And they went out of fashion. Mm. The way these people are going, they've built empires so big, mm. so big that any upcomer, yeah. the way they, they've planned so much ahead that they will crush any upcomer. Or yeah. buy them. <laughs> or buy them, yeah. So I mean look at if you if you know, I mean look at let's take example for a Zuckerberg who owns Instagram, Facebook and WhatsApp. Yeah, finish. Do you know how many people uh, he has control, he can, one, can you understand? Yeah, there, there are quite some other small ones, but yeah. that if, if he wants to reach out to, say, half of the world at one moment with a message or something, he mm -hmm. can do it. Yeah. Yeah. Which is why he has been under fire. But then the way Bezos is going, he's expected to be mm. the first person who would cross a thousand billion. Mm. 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 Which is like a wow. You understand? Before his lifetime goes, at the rate which he's going, yeah. you understand? At the rate which he's going, his wife still has shares. She didn't sell her shares. She didn't get a cash, this thing. Mm. So she's up. B10 is the only person who's richer than her as a lady. Yeah. She's the second richest woman in the world wow. with over 66 billion mm -hmm. over. Mm -hmm. So you see, tech is not, um, tech is not, okay, I like tech. I can do tech. You can take, no. It's an investment. It is where the world is. Mm. Mm. So whether you're doing art or this thing, thing, thing though, is, is to start. <laughs> because all of them started from somewhere. Yeah. So this shouldn't discourage you if you have stuff in mind. Mary, let's, let's team up together. Let's part, let's, let's be, you know, <laughs> Build an team, app. team billionaire. <laughs> let's do this. You know what? We would leave teamwork aside and let <laughs> Yomi do this single work of taking the news. <laughs> all right. So now doctors employed by the Lagos State Government are embarking on a three-day warning strike from today. The chairman of the Medical Guild in Lagos, Dr. Olajimi, Oluwajimi Shodipo, uh, says the industrial action is due to the expiry of the ultimatum given to the state government, stating that 70% of their demands must be met. 
This includes erasing the wage disparity between the federal and legal state doctors. Dr. Shodipo also said the COVID-19 hazard and inducement allowances approved by the federal government have not been affected by the legal state government. He says, quote, the doctors working in the COVID-19 isolation centers are still being owed two months salaries, which have remained unpaid at the moment. They are also being unceremoniously disengaged without recourse to their welfare, end quote. Right now, we understand that the doctors and representatives of the state government are still undergoing some discussion regarding the issues raised. Chairman of the Medical Guild in Lagos, Dr. Shodipo, confirmed this in a phone conversation with our correspondent yesterday. Uh, in the meantime, 56 patients have been discharged from Lagos isolation facilities. Governor Baba Jide Songwolu says they are 12 females and 44 males, including nine foreign nationals. He said the patients were discharged after full recovery and testing negative twice for COVID-19. This brings the number of managed and discharged patients in the state to 1,897. Now, let's take you to Delta State, where the Secretary to the State Government, Chiedu ABA, has also been discharged from an isolation center in Asaba after testing negative for COVID-19. Mr. ABA, who spent 21 days at the facility, thanked Nigerians for their prayers over his recovery, and uh, he also thanked Governor Ifai Okowa and his family. This brings the number of discharged persons in the state to 583, while 31 deaths have been recorded. Uh, the government says it remains committed to minimizing the spread of the virus, urging citizens to comply with safety protocols. In Kwara State, the deputy governor and chairman of the Technical Committee on Coronavirus, Kayode Alabi, has again called on the people of the state to always adhere strictly to COVID-19 safety protocols. Mr. Alabi, who made this call shortly after some of his aides tested positive for COVID-19, warned that the disease is a real and present danger that requires serious caution. The deputy governor had tested negative for COVID-19. According to a statement by his chief press secretary, Mudupe Joel, uh, the deputy governor said uh, the COVID-19 positive aides have been admitted to COVID-19 infectious center, Sobi Specialist Hospital in Ilori. Co-founder of Budget, uh, Oluwashim Onigbinde, was... Uh, our guest on Business Nigeria yesterday, he said government must concentrate on improving revenue generation and reduce borrowing. Five years ago, our, our debt service, our debt service cost was almost a trillion naira. Now we are doing around 2.6, 2.8 trillion naira. I mean, and that is the biggest uh, part of the budget that, that is on a continuous growth. So it's a big worry, but I think the APC government or the president, uh, the government of Brazil, Muhammad Dubai, does not want to... Uh, putting the work around far-reaching reforms, and, uh, and that's on the revenue and the expenditure side. And until we do this, we'll continuously borrow, which will have a huge impact on, uh, along the way. Now back here in Lagos, the police have rescued a U.S. citizen who was detained in Lagos for more than one year by one Chukwebuka Obiaku, a Nigerian she met on Facebook. Uh, police spokesman Frank Mba disclosed this on Sunday, where he revealed that Mr. Obiaku leered the victim into the country under the pretext of love and deceitfully married her on the 15th of May 2019. He also forcefully collected and took control of her credit and debit cards, as well as the operation of her bank accounts. Upon investigation, it was revealed that the suspect is a graduate of business administration and management and an internet fraudster who uh, has defrauded many Nigerians. He will be prosecuted when investigations are concluded. Now, over in the U.S., the state of Florida now accounts for a huge number of new COVID-19 cases registered yesterday at 15,299 new infections in 24 hours. The state, with just 7% of the U.S. population, surpassed the previous daily record held by California. Uh, Florida, which began lifting coronavirus restrictions in May, has proved vulnerable due to tourism 
and an elderly population. Its figures eclipse the worst daily rates uh, since a scene in New York in April. Florida also registered an additional 45 deaths. Well, that's it on the news update for this hour. Good morning, Lagos. Good morning, Nigeria. Welcome to another segment of the fitness aspect on the Wake Up Nigeria show. Today, we're going to be doing a lot of abs because I know that everybody wants abs. And the truth is that everybody has abs in them. It's just the ability to bring those, pack, those abs or packs, like people call it, into 3D format. So, wake up, wake up, Nigeria, and let's get to work. First of all, we'll start with warm ups. Thank you so much for staying tuned. And of course, it's time for us to go bake it in the kitchen. Yes, that's what we're going to be doing today. And I'm not alone. I've got Chef Tito. How Vera. are you doing today? Very well, thank you. Fantastic. Are you freezing? Like, or you're trying to decide how to create magic this morning? I'm actually trying to decide how to create magic. Okay, so we keep it that way. Let's talk about what we are making use of for our breakfast. And first, what are we having for breakfast? We're having raisins baked oatmeal for breakfast. Mm, raisins baked oatmeal. All right, so the ingredients, what are we making use of? We're using our traditional rolled oats, 
Okay. We're using coconut milk. Okay. We're using bananas, okay. dark corn syrup, okay. raisins, okay. dark chocolate, uh -huh. some grapes, some almonds, Mons, and uh, salted butter, yeah. and cinnamon. So okay. Any extract. Fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, so uh, we're going to start now. Yes. Okay. So what's the first thing we need to do? Let's we'll start with mashing the bananas first. Okay. Now, I noticed there is no... Go on. Go on. Go on. Go ahead. I noticed there's no use of... Uh, flour in this one? No, not at all. Is it deliberate? Yes, yeah, deliberate because it's healthy breakfast. Okay, okay. So the idea is to make use of fruits and uh, exactly. fibers as well. Fruit just and fibers, okay. um, sugar free. Okay. And it's dairy free, so plant-based milk. Okay, okay. So instead of using regular milk like um, cow milk. Yeah. Or exactly. cheese and all that. You're making use of coconut milk coconut instead. Coconut milk, yes, yes. Aha. So this is not just healthy. It's also good for those who have um, a dairy-free uh, diet. Yes, yes. And um, people who... Vegans can actually have this because there's no honey in here. Okay, so, okay. Yeah. Now, besi besides all of this, is there anything else that could be added and still give you that healthy breakfast that anybody who is on a diet or a vegan or stuff can still have? Okay, um, does anything perhaps? you're going to... Yeah, apple sauce works, mm -hmm. maple syrup works, and um, let's say no sugar, of course. Yeah, no sugar. <laughs> yeah, no, no sugar, sugar, no honey, no sweetener at all. If you want to make it vegan, so you'd have to take out honey. Okay. But if you want to make it um, vegetarian and something that every other person who doesn't have food allergies or... Yeah diet restrictions can have, then okay. you could add honey. Then you could also add any fruit of your choice. Okay, so yeah. just about any fruit works at least. Yes, any the most important works. thing is to do away with all the sweeteners and allow yeah. the fruits and fibers do their work naturally. Exactly. Okay, so uh, bananas have a way of sweetening meals anyway. So we'll see how this one turns out. Mm -hmm. What if I want to ditch the bananas and use pineapples instead? Would it work? Perfect. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. Out of thought with all the, you know, the liquid in pineapples, uh, all those juices, it would probably not work as well as banana. So because we're using traditional rolled oats, okay. they would naturally absorb every form of moisture oh. and liquid. Okay. So that's why we're using this quantity of coconut milk, okay. because this would absorb it. Aha. Uh -huh. So the, it's even better if, it, if it's uh, kind of like pineapple, because it means that you have it a bit moist, right? The, yeah. the moisture will at least... Uh, come out even better. Now, I'm wondering, besides pineapples, can I also make use of watermelon and still achieve something this No, good? fortunately not. It doesn't work, <laughs> because I, I have a thing for <laughs> watermelon. It yeah, work. so I would have thought. So oh. the banana also replaces um, these of eggs too, so it makes up, it's a binder. Yeah, yeah. that's so. true, that's true. So this is more like getting, eating your cake and, uh, you know, and uh, having, having it, it yeah. at the end of the day. Because not only do you get to have this cake-like meal, uh, you also eat healthy, which is fantastic. All right, so after mashing this, what's the next thing? Um, so we'll just pick out the grapes and okay. um, heat our butter and um, literally everything goes in at the same time. Okay. Just mix so it up. So when you say heat the butter, what do you mean? We're going to put it in a pan and make it... Yes, or we could use a microwave or you could use a pan. Okay, okay. So let's do the mixture and then uh, hopefully by the time we, we take a break and come back, our butter would have uh, melted. melted. And then we'll be able to put that in and put everything in the pan. In the pan, yeah. Okay. So all of these grapes go in. So the grapes actually stay on the, on the top. So we're going to line the grapes on the top of the butter. Okay. As oh. a topping. As a topping. Yes. Is that the same thing for the raisins? Or no, the raisins no, no, no. The go raisins in? go in. Okay. Because they need to absorb the moisture and the liquid too. Okay, okay. The ingredients are currently on your screen right now. Uh, so you might want to scribble them down as quickly as possible. Right now, however, we'll go on with all the preparations. We really have uh, to move on, however. Okay, so let's see. Aha. Okay, so um, I'm going to be heading straight uh, to Mike right now because I know for sure that uh, Mike has something really interesting for us. Hi, Mike. Yeah, that place. Um, <laughs> yeah. That, uh, 
That platter looks very colorful, yeah. you know. Yeah. I, 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 I love the grapes there. Grapes, yeah. are, I, grapes uh, chocolate, raisins, uh, ah, everything sweet in there. Grapes. I can't believe Mary was asking for a sweetener with all the sweetness already on that table. Mm. Oh, wow. That's sweet all round, not just in the middle. <laughs> okay, so yeah. uh, this week in history, right? We've yeah, got some interesting let's stuff take a them. trip down memory lane. 20th of July, 2014, Liberian-American lawyer Patrick Sawyer arrives in the city of Lagos in Nigeria. Now, he is notable for being the index case for the introduction of Ebola virus disease during the West African Ebola ep epidemic. Now, he collapsed and died five, year, uh, right, five days later. Now, Dr. Stella Dadovo is credited with having curbed the wider spread of the virus by placing patient zero in quarantine, despite pressure from the Liberian government to release Patrick Sawyer to attend a conference. And she said it was for the greater good. She would not release him. Sadly, by August 4th, it was confirmed that she had also contracted the virus and died on the 19th of August, survived by her husband and son. Mm. So Patrick Sawyer, the index case. You know, there was even a film about uh, yeah, what happened back then. three days, if I'm mm -hmm. correct, by Steve yeah. Lucas. So um, as, uh, Dr. Stella Dadevo is a yeah. national hero yeah. for what she did. And yeah. uh, great one. It's, it's something I, I look back with the memories that, yes, mm -hmm. we do have people that we can look up to as a nation and say, yeah, these are really heroes. Yeah. It's a great one. And uh, yeah. she, she saved countless number of lives. She did. She did. Um, she did. And imagine he was she supposed did. to go for a conference. Just imagine. He was I, 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 to wish, go I wish something conference. like this could have happened for uh, what? this corona period. Uh, just I mean, keep people. You oh, know. Goodness. All right. And uh, up next, uh, July 12th, 1854, American inventor George Eastman, who's the founder of the Eastman Kodak Company and Kodak Camera, was born in New York. His first camera, the Kodak, was sold in 1888 and considered or consisted of a box camera with 100 exposures. Later, he offered the first brownie camera, which was intended for children. By 1927, Eastman Kodak was the largest U.S. company in the industry. Although Eastman invented amateur photography, there are very few pictures of him, and he often went unrecognized in his hometown of Rochester. Eastman was one of the first American industrialists to embrace and implement the concept of employee profit sharing in the United States. He committed suicide in 1932. Hmm. So that story is, is a remarkable one because he created something so, he created a portable camera. The whole idea of taking a personal, a selfie, is because you know, of someone like Kodak. You know, I remember, I remember <laughs> the first type of cameras, those ones that had very big boxes yeah. that you had to put your head and cover oh, no, over yeah. the box and then somebody else would hold the hold light and light all that. Those and, very old and ones he and all changed that. that. So he was a revolutionary yeah, in yeah. that regard. And then for the first time, uh, uh, someone was sharing profits with his staff. Now we see that everywhere. Mm, great you know, one. Great where, one. Where if your staff or yeah. people are happy and they're mm. making money with you, they take the business as their own mm -hmm. and they'll push it that way. So. Yeah. Great so man. that is a key point in history. Great now, uh, something else that happened July 17th, 1964, ANC leader Nelson Mandela, recently sentenced to life imprisonment, was awarded the Julio Curie Gold Medal for Peace. Madiba received numerous awards for peace throughout his life, but was forced to receive some, including this particular medal, in absentia due to his imprisonment. Nelson Mandela, along with seven others, being sentenced to prison for their work against the white minority apartheid regime, was awarded for his hard work by the World Peace Council in 1964. Now, the council awarded him this award, Medal for Peace, uh, which is the highest honor one can receive from the WPC. The announcement of the award was made by the leader, uh, a Welsh newspaper, uh, a day before Mandela's birthday. It was the first of a number of awards he would receive in absentia while he was imprisoned. Mm. Now, that is so key that, you know, um, even though he was locked up, even though, you know, the, he was still being recognized all over the world for, uh, for his activism and everything he tried to achieve. Um, and honestly, I, I, I don't know, there's so much you can say about Mandela. Yeah, and uh, he's that, such a key why, icon. And if, why, if there's someone that doesn't know much about him, I think they should just go. And that's the reason why I. Things. It's yeah. it's even um, when you think about um, icons of the black race generally, mm -hmm. you think of 
Nelson Mandela, I think of Martin Luther King Jr., you think about Malcolm X. Uh, these are the people that uh, spearheaded uh, revolutions and, you know, spearheaded movements that, uh, you, you, where do you want to start to talk mm. about them? Yeah. What could have great one, great one, one of the many, which of course he could not receive. Yeah. And uh, still this week in history, 15th July, 15th. 45. King Henry VIII's flagship Mary Rose sinks at Portsmouth. 731 die. Now for 34 years, the Mary Rose was Henry VIII's flagship. Faced with the threat of the French Navy and a strong Scottish fleet, King Henry started building up his naval firepower as soon as he became king. Built in Portsmouth, the Mary Rose was launched in 1511. It sank in July 1545 in the Battle of Solent as Henry VIII looked on with his army and his fleet taking up a defensive position against a formidable French fleet. Hundreds of men aboard the ship drowned and only around 25 survived. The ship sank while turning either due to human error, overloading, a gust of wind that made the ship unsta unstable or a cannonball fired by the French. <laughs> That's already four mm, mm. possible As it, yeah. <laughs> four possible ways that it could have happened because mm. we were not there and it's going yeah. to be hard. I mean, you're talking about yeah. well, what now? You're talking mm. about well over seven, six, yeah. seven centuries ago. Centuries ago. So uh, six centuries ago. So that was, so that was quite something. This was this particular ship, this yeah. warship was the reason why everybody was afraid of this particular king. Mm. This particular Henry VIII. Henry VIII is a king in history that yeah. was notable. Mm. Very, very, the, 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 yeah. the name flashes across, you know. He was quite uh, the man. And of course, the ship was discovered in May mm. 1971 yeah. and uh, raised in 1982. It was, it was quite now, when recent. they raised it, the things they found on top of that ship. No, definitely. Wow. Have you, if, you ever, if you ever watch <laughs> Underwater Chronicles, mm. you, you get scared. Mm. Man, you get scared. You see, the water, is something that man, I, I, if sailors, you know, sailors regale people with tales. It is said that tailors, sailors are some of the biggest liars because, you know, they tell about the things under the water and yeah. you can't even believe and all of yeah. that. Uh, under the water is another world, it's a scary world. When you bring <laughs> up ships and all of that, uh, <laughs> shipwrecked, uh, you know, and all of that, when you bring them up and you see what's inside, what's the, inside. the treasures. Ah. I say treasures because even, even if they don't look like gold or silver to you, mm. they are artifacts, uh, things that should be in museums right now. And, uh, well, that is in the museum right now. That ship, the that ship. Is, is in the museum. You know, it was right all these now. things that made me obsessed, uh, obsessed with the Bermuda Triangle. Mm. One point, I started studying and all of that, but hey. Let's not even go there. That's a whole <laughs> nah, story in that, itself. Don't go there. But uh, at this point, let's take a quick break. Thanks for taking that trip down memory lane with us. We'll have more for you next week. But for now, we'll be back after this. All right, welcome back. How about time uh, for uh, some Monday motivation uh, today? Now, Larry Olushola is the founder and chief catalyst of the Olushola Larry Coaching Academy, a mind, emotions, and behavioral change academy. Now, he is renowned for his extensive array of works of coaching and uh, publishing and also keynote speaking with individuals and organizations locally and internationally. Now today he's going to be talking to us about environment and relationship. Now, uh, good morning, coach. Hi, good morning, Yomi. How are you today? Uh, excellent, excellent. Uh, it's good to see you. And uh, we know that you're going to be talking to us about something very, very important. And it, it looks like two different issues when you talk about the environment and mm -hmm. relationship. And of course, you're going to be telling us how both uh, issues are connected. So talk to us, sir. Yes. All right. You know, um, this is a series uh, where we're looking at, you know, the four critical needs uh, that you, 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 you must have in your life um, for you to survive, for you to thrive and succeed in difficult times like this COVID-19 pandemic. And last week, I talked about the first one, which was purpose, identity and vision. Purpose is the reason why you are here. The essence of your existence, identity is who you are and who you are not, what you are and what you are not. And vision is the picture of your desired future and the pathway to your desired future. And today, I want to talk about environment and relationships. And you were asking, what is the correlation between environment and relationship? In fact, what is even the relationship between environment, relationship, and purpose, identity, and vision? And yeah. I'm going to lay it now. 
environment is, you know, um, your physical, psychological, um, spiritual, and emotional um, atmosphere. Hmm. You know, we were all nurtured into nature. That is, you know, the environment that we're born into, that is your family, um, <clears throat> your home, and, you know, with the people and the things we, we, within it is what we define as an environment. So right. we're not just talking about a physical space. Yeah, because I, I, I wondered about that. I wondered about that. Once you said environment, lots of people are thinking uh, where I live or my community. But you're, you're talking something that's a little bit deeper and sort of like a sum total of your experiences. That's it. That's it. Your environment, you know, influences your, the entirety of your experience. It, it influences how you are nurtured into your nature. And so your nature is a function of what your father, your mother, your peers, your, you know, your teachers have taught you over time. And it, it encompasses the relationships that you have around you. Now, I often say to people, you know, um, show me your friends and associations and I will accurately predict your future. <laughs> you know, he who walks with the wise shall be wise. Hmm. The companion of fools shall be destroyed. And so for you to survive, for you to thrive and succeed, you have to ask yourself, what am I inheriting? What have I brought from my past environment? Because the influence of your past environment is critical to what you experience today. The influence of your environment today will be critical to what you can achieve in your vision, in your purpose tomorrow. So uh, that uh, coach, the coach there, uh, Larry Olushola, talking to us about the environment and how uh, this affects, uh, you know, our past environment and the way we were raised, our past influences, uh, and how it affects us, you know, on our personal lives and, and what we deal with uh, today. Now, this is really, really key and very important. Hopefully, we'll be able to connect or reconnect with him uh, in, in a few uh, minutes. But I want to find out what's happening with Mary in the kitchen. I know I saw a lot of chocolate and, and sweet stuff there. Uh, hey, guys. The, sadly, the chocolates have all disappeared. <laughs> uh, but fortunately, not into my belly. You know I have a thing for chocolate. So I had to warn her to pour it quickly, or else we'll have nothing for uh, the oatmeal this morning. OK, so we still have Chef Tito right here. And today's breakfast is raisins baked oatmeal. oatmeal. Fantastic. All right. so. Um, Oh, oh, so far, so good. What do we have in here? In here, we have our traditional rolled oats, okay. dark chocolate, um, dark corn syrup. Okay. We have our raisins, we have our almonds, and we have vanilla extracts, coconut milk, and cinnamon. And cinnamon. Okay, so that's about it now. And we are about mashed to bananas. load up. <laughs> what did you say? And mashed bananas. And mashed bananas. <laughs> yes, we had to do some mashing. So, there is no way we can miss that. So we are about to put it all together. You're, you're not making use of this anymore, no, are you? No. Okay, so we are about to put everything in the pan. Now, as she said earlier, these... Natural habitat. And who are the people that should surround you? Now, Leonor Messi has other support, you know, um, uh, footballers around him. Right they cannot okay. only beat the next level if it's only him. Okay, so... Yeah. All right. Okay, so, um, ah, Yomi, you don't want to go on with the, with the conversation. We're right here, we're right here. <laughs> I already told All right. you to go on now. All right, Coach, uh, thank you so much. I, I, wanted, to, I wanted us to uh, revisit the issue on, of environment, especially your past affecting your future. There are a lot of people who said uh, because of the product of uh, being in a particular environment and how they were raised, they used that as an excuse for... Uh, maybe their behavior today or their character or why they're not successful or why they're not making progress. How do you break out of that kind of chain uh, and start making progress into your future? Environment is very critical to your survival, your thriving, and your success. The people that surround you and the things that you surround yourself with is very, very critical. They must be going in the direction of your vision, in the direction of your identity, in the direction of your purpose. Mm -hmm. Now, let me use a final example to, to illustrate this. If you get into a ship or a plane, 
yes, we know that the plane will take you from where you are to where you desire to be. <laughs> but if you are going to Tokyo, Japan, and you board a Lufthansa flight that is going to Germany, you are on a plane, you are on a flight with people, but you are on a plane, on a flight, with people that are going somewhere else. Even though the environment seems right, but the destination is wrong. Mm -hmm. So you have boarded a flight that is not going where you're going. You are in the wrong environment with the wrong people. Mm -hmm. And so when we talk about environments and relationships, right, it is in line with your vision and your purpose. Mm -hmm. Now, a man without a purpose, a man without a vision is a man that is going nowhere. And a man that has not aligned his purpose, his identity, his vision with his environment, and his relationships. There's a man that will soon be frustrated, irritated, he will be depressed, he will be stressed, he will be anxious, he will be worried, and he will destroy himself. Wow. So I, I, wanted, I, I wanted us to revisit a question I just mentioned now. Uh, I don't know if you can hear me very clearly, but I said that Hello. Uh, there are people who... Um, who use the excuse of, of their past environment. Can you hear me, sir? Can you hear me, sir? Hello. I'm trying to see, I'm trying to see whether we have some, for some audio connection there to, to the coach. I'm trying to see whether we can uh, reconnect with the coach, but uh, one of the key things that he said to us this morning, very important, is the fact that uh, your environment determines where you're going. And then also you need to be able to determine, you know, where you want to go, even no matter what uh, the past has been. And then getting on a plane, with, uh, going in the opposite direction of, of where you are supposed to be going is not what you should be doing, especially uh, during this um, on certain times. So when you get on a plane or when you get in, when you start a journey, make sure that it's in the direction of where you want to go. Let's still try to see if we can connect with the coach right now. Uh, hello, coach. Are you there? All right, let's head back to, uh, to, uh, to Mary right now. It looks like, okay, so it looks like we're back with the coach. Can you hear me, sir? All right, can you Hello? hear me, sir? Just trying to connect uh, with, the, with the coach, Larry Olusha. Hello? Hello? Can you hear me now, sir? Hello? Uh, Hello? It's, it still seems like the... The connection isn't great. It seems like the connection isn't, break, uh, isn't great. And I wanted to ask Mary one or two things, but uh, we'll have to wrap up uh, this segment and hopefully uh, we'll uh, be able to conclude this, con uh, this uh, discussion next week. Wow, I really wanted to ask him that question. Anyway, we have to take a break now and we'll be right back with the third hour of the show. At these times, it's essential for you to live in the moment. Nothing is worth more than today. To this day, this hour, and possibly, of course, the next 45 minutes. <laughs> yeah, and our time is of the essence. Two hours gone by already. Uh, make every single moment count. Mm. Yes, you can count on us for the right words of motivation, business tips, a mouth-watering breakfast, or at least some breakfast ideas for you. And uh, hey, nothing else but top-notch family entertainment. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's got to be required to put you in the right frame of mind. Welcome to the final hour mm. of the show. My name is Yomi Wope. And I'm Titi Laya Oyinsong. Now, believe it or not, we're going to be three years old on Friday. The countdown begins today. So we implore you, stay tuned to us every single day this week. You're a huge part of our celebration, so make uh, sure that you're streaming with us every single day this week. Uh, something special is going to be happening for our viewers. Uh, TVCEntertainment.tv is the website. You can also find us at TVC 
Connect on Facebook. You can also subscribe to our YouTube channel, that's CBC Entertainment on YouTube. And of course, you can get loads of our videos right there. Yeah, so this Friday, Wake Up Nigeria is going to be three. July 17th was our first show three years ago. And we want to celebrate with you. Head on over to our social media platforms on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Uh, use the hashtag Wake Up Nigeria. Uh, what's your best part of the show? Yeah. Who's your favorite presenter? That's like asking who's your favorite child. <laughs> so I know that you guys are going to be what? Uh, being very political about afraid? it. I are love you, you say I love all the presenters. Are you afraid that you're going that they're going to say it's easy? Yeah, they're going to say. Am I? I'm not afraid. Though. I know. That. I know it's me. Most people like Mike, actually. Yeah, a lot of people like Mike. You know. Yeah. Um, and I think there's a reason for that. Maybe he has the fun been, guy. Yeah, no, even maybe he has been giving them money. Maybe he has been doing giveaways oh, on movie this page. tickets. Yeah, movie tickets. Yeah, yeah, that's why they're yeah. giving him. He's okay. Giving anyway, him. so yeah, so <laughs> head on over to our social media platforms. Who's your favorite <laughs> presenter? I know most of you guys will say I love all of you differently, mm -hmm. like like parents say to their children. But let's know anyway. <laughs> Talk to us. Use that hashtag Wake Up Nigeria on TVC. We still have Olua Toby Ali joining us with some business tips today. He'll be treating passion equals business. And then finally, we're going to be meeting with uh, actor and businessman Michael Godson. Uh, he is uh, someone who's been around in Nollywood for about 10 years and is going to be sharing a few interesting things with us today via Skype. Yeah, so I like, I like uh, Nollywood movies because <laughs> the, their scripts are, so they're scripted like they are acting on stage. <laughs> so there's a little bit of melodrama on in every, in every. Uh, Very deep. That the way you, what you said just now connects because uh, yeah. you know there's there was a, a shift. There's something I watched on on Netflix. This Hollywood. There's a series called Hollywood, okay. and the way movies shifted from when they were black and white films, when there was no sound, mm. you had to use a lot of motion mm. to depict you know all your emotions then eventually sound came in but it wasn't that clear so you had to really project and then eventually tv color everything came. then you had to sort of tone it down i think we're still in that era, era of trying to be very descriptive yeah. with so, every so emotion this are nollywood they what? yeah they all no, come up I'm you. Saying, we're still, we're nollywood, still nollywood is just 30 years old those people they are 5000 years old yes <laughs> no that's it's it's a, it's a process we're going to well, get there. exactly i we'll tell get people there. that that excuse mm. is not feasible mm. why is it not feasible look the point is somebody spent 5000 years to learn something and get to his stage doesn't mean that, that you, you should go spend. back and spend the same exactly. money. You pick up where the exactly. person went to. If we stood like that, look at our music today. How long has music been from Negro spirituals back in the plantations and all of that? Wow. Music has been there, but look at where we are now, worldwide now. We're now on par. Exactly. I think we so just you can't it give that while, excuse. It still took a while for I, I us think to we get need there. to. My point is, I don't give that excuse. Yeah, because I mean, if if you had a situation like Titi was saying, where there's only a single mic on the set mm. and you had to project back mm. in the day, mm. so that which is why when you watch Gone with the Wind and all those mm -hmm. films, it was loud. Mm -hmm. So the actors had to be loud and yeah. boisterous yeah. for for the mic to pick their voice. Their voice. Now the mic is on you. Mm -hmm. So even if you're whispering. Mm. Even if you're whispering, it can be it, it can be picked. So I think mm -hmm. we should chill chill a little bit with the melodrama. I, I'm of the opinion that it has to do with production and production yeah. costs. Because yeah. um, if you're able to afford the very best, you will get the b very best. Now, when we talk about Hollywood, Bollywood, we still have low budget movies in those places, mm, and course. the low budget movies. You watch it and you're like, is this really from Hollywood? Is this really from Bollywood? <laughs> so what we actually need is more you know, high budget movies yeah. so that we can at least come to par on, on some levels. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, some of the big budget ones we've had still haven't been able to really get that um, thing right. There are yeah. some that have, but like some might just have the best pictures and then sound my real yeah. yeah. Or You know, little so things it's, like it's, that. It's crazy. What goes into a Nigerian uh, movie's budget is different from what will go into a, a Hollywood movie budget. So for instance, now in Nigerian movie budget, you're trying to budget generator. Yeah. Yeah, and the fuel for the generator. Imagine if we could just take away that alone. One, Do you know how much more we'd be able to put into one of our One of our producers here, Francis, <laughs> if you give him 10 million, he'll shoot you three movies. I'll <laughs> <laughs> give you the balance. <laughs> Mr. Francis, that is for you. It's coming you. This is for you. Three movies. Are you sure? He's Only about three. to say Only seven. Three. Three. That's below budget. <laughs> <laughs> where you can go now. Is it? Uh, 
11 or 12 maybe it's cancelled. Please let us keep within the budget of yeah. time more like Yummy, it's all yours. All right. <laughs> now, doctors employed by the Lagos State Government are embarking on a three day warning strike from today. Chairman of the Medical Guild in Lagos, Dr. Oluwa Jimmy Shodipo, says the industrial action is due to the expiry of the ultimatum given uh, to the state government, stating that 70% of their demands must be met. Uh, this includes erasing the wage disparity between the federal and state doctors. Dr. Shodipo also said the COVID-19 hazard and inducement allowances approved by the federal government have not been affected by the Lagos state government. He says, quote, the doctors working in the COVID-19 isolation centers are still being owed two months salaries, which have remained unpaid at the moment. They're also being unceremoniously disengaged without recourse to their welfare, end quote. Right now, uh, we understand that the doctors and representatives of the state government are still uh, undergoing some discussions. And the chairman of the Medical Guild, Dr. Shodipo, confirmed this in a phone conversation with our correspondent yesterday. In the meantime, 56 patients have been discharged from the Lagos isolation facilities. Governor Babajide Songolu says they are 12 females and 44 males, including nine foreign nationals. He said the patients were discharged after full recovery and testing negative twice for COVID-19. This number brings the no total number of managed and discharged patients in the state to 1,897. Over in Kwara State, the Deputy Governor and Chairman of the Technical Committee on Coronavirus, Kayode Alabi, uh, has called again on the people of the state to always adhere strictly to COVID-19 safety protocols. Mr. Alabi, who made the call shortly after some of his aides tested positive for COVID-19, warned that the disease is a real and present danger that requires serious caution. The deputy governor had uh, tested negative for COVID-19. Uh, of course, according to a statement by his chief press secretary, Modupe Joel, uh, the deputy governor said his COVID-19 positive aides have been admitted to the COVID-19 infectious center at Sobi Specialist Hospital in Ilori. Now, co-founder of Budget, Sheon Onigbinde, was uh, our guest on Business Nigeria last night. He said, government must concentrate on improving revenue generation and reduce borrowing. Five years ago, our, our, debt, service, our debt service cost was almost a trillion naira. Now we are doing around 2.6 to 2.8 trillion naira. I mean, and that is the biggest uh, part of the budget that, that is on a continuous growth. So it's a big worry, but I think... The APC government or the president, uh, the government of Brazil, Muhammad Zubair, does not want to uh, put in the work around far-reaching reforms. And, uh, and that's on the revenue and the expenditure side. And until we do this, we'll continuously borrow, which will have a huge impact uh, along the way. Back here in Lagos, the police have rescued a U.S. citizen who was detained in Lagos for more than one year by one Chukwe Bukwa Obiaku, a Nigerian she met on Facebook. Police spokesman Frank Mba disclosed this on Sunday where he revealed that Mr. Obiaku leered the victim into the country under the pretext of love and romance and deceitfully married her on the 15th of May 2019. He also forcefully collected and took control of her credit and debit cards as well as the operation of her bank accounts. Upon investigation, it was revealed that the suspect is a graduate of business administration and management and an internet fraudster who has also defrauded many Nigerians. He will be prosecuted when investigations are concluded. Over in America, Florida in the U.S. accounts for a huge number of the new COVID-19 cases registered yesterday with a record 15,299 new infections in 24 hours. The state, with just 7% of the U.S. population, surpassed the previous daily record held by California. Florida, which began lifting coronavirus restrictions in May, has proved vulnerable due to terrorism and an elderly population. Its figures eclipsed the worst daily rates seen in New York in April. Florida also registered an additional 45 deaths. Well, that's it on the news for today on Wake Up Nigeria.
It's time for us to talk business on Wake Up Nigeria. And doing justice to that this morning is Olua Tobi Ali, a dynamic speaker, business management consultant, author, uh, a U.S. certified uh, gold to success coach, and business development specialist, a man who is passionate about raising world changes that will in some way transform their nation, families, and organizations with universal principles for the benefit of humanity. Now, he has uh, something quite interesting to share with us this morning, and it's all about passion and its equivalence to business. Hi, Toby. How are you doing this morning? Yeah, great, great. You look great, by oh, the way. Oh, thank Good you morning. very much. Thank you. Yeah. All right, so, Toby, uh, when we talk about passion, hmm? uh, yes. there are different definitions to passion, but you might want to narrow it down to our discussion this morning. What sort of passion are we looking yes. at? Okay, so uh, le let, me, let me put it this way. Uh, the same way we have, like, uh, like, like you said, I like to use natural principles. The same way we have a natural law of design that allows birds to fly, you yeah. know, because of their weight and stuff, and it's why they are not on the ground and they are in the air. It's the same way everyone is designed in a particular way in the area of their passion to allow them to or to allow them function in a particular sphere of business in life. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, because it comes naturally, many people despise that, not knowing that that's their God-given, uh, you know, part to mm -hmm. actually fulfill and to actually contribute to, you know, the universal, uh, you know, uh, benefit of humanity. So many times, what people naturally have a passion for they actually don't know that that passion can actually become the major business that makes them become very great in life. Okay, okay. Uh, so yes. the, what, what we're actually looking at today is more of how to make use of that passion, right? Exactly, exactly. And how even that passion can become a business. Because, you know, we are in a time right now where COVID-19 has disrupted a lot of things yes. and people are kind of stuck. They don't even know what to do. Some people have lost their jobs. Yes. Some are even wondering, oh, what kind of business do I want to come into? Yeah. And there, there are reasons why passion is actually even important because business is tough. For instance, people don't even realize that you don't, you, you don't start cashing out in a business immediately. It mm -hmm. takes some no, time. And the truth is, if it's not something you are passionate about, chances are that you are not going to be there for a long haul and yeah. you will not be long enough to be able to make you know, a lot of impact and even a lot of income from that business if it's not something you're actually passionate about. Okay. Okay. So now let's yes. talk about um, making use of your passion. Now that we've established that fact, how do we yes. cash in literally uh, into our passion? Okay. So the first thing I like to say is that everyone, the same way we are, like I mentioned about it, everything created is a product. So even we human beings are a product. For instance, we are a product of our parents. We are a product of the society. We are a product of Nigeria. For instance, all the issues in Nigeria that makes people want to talk. Nigeria is one of the greatest topics you want to talk about. But there's a reason why we are in Nigeria. So some of us are passionate about talking about Nigeria. And it's because we are probably the people, not even that we are probably, we are the people who are going to transform Nigeria. So we need to understand that we are a product, including ourselves. And when we understand that, then we'll now begin to look within us to understand certain things about ourselves. Now, the truth is this. When someone is passionate about something, what you are passionate about and what I am passionate about are different. So what passion actually does, it, it reveals our own uniqueness. It reveals the kind of things that we are eager to solve. So some people are passionate, for instance, about uh, uh, taking care of people, feeding people. Uh, some people do it naturally. They just feel, oh, I, I don't like seeing uh, you know, uh, old people go hungry, for instance. Hmm. But unfortunately, the person doesn't realize that some people don't give a hoot. Some people don't care. Hmm. And not knowing that that might even be a revealer of what that person really is Actually. wired to be. Yeah. Who knows? That person might actually need to start maybe like a soup kitchen for the elderly, right? Yeah. Or that person might even need to start thinking of how they can set up an NGO, yeah. you know, that will take care of, you know, yeah. or, of uh, old people and might even get grants in that regard. Because one thing passion does is this. It's not, you cannot fake it, right? Passion is like a spark. It's like a spark of brilliance. It's like mm -hmm. a spark of excellence. I, I remember a story about someone who was um, who was a banker, but for some reason, anytime they come to this person's desk, the person's desk was always properly arranged. The person was even a manager, but after wow. a while, you even find out the person will be cleaning, you know, parts of the office and stuff. And one day, someone came to the person's house and saw how very clean and neat the person's house was. And the person was like, wow, you, who did this? Do you have, you know, who is your uh, cleaning service? And the person said, no, I do it myself. And the person was like, are you serious? He said, I, I love to do it. You know, the person was just talking and talking. Before you know what's happening, this person I'm talking to you about right now has a cleaning company. And he's wow. making 
10 times more than what they she have been earning. what wow. she has been making wow. exactly while she was working so it's on it's, it's very important for us to understand that passion is what stands us out from the crowd and makes us identifiable and that can even become a brand if you understand what i mean yeah yeah it's a good thing you mentioned uh, someone who has uh, what mo many people will refer to as an ocd for cleanliness uh, but let's even talk about yeah. someone who has the gift of gab for example you're a great talker. thank you like myself yeah you're very intelligent and all how can you make use of that passion because you know right now when we talk about um uh, pr people presenting or hosting events yes, yes. those things are kind of yes. like on hold so how then yes. can you maximize that talent of yours if you have it? All right. So someone like me, let me use myself as an example. You'll be, you'll be shocked at what I studied in school. I studied anatomy. I've done my research and I found that 90% of Nigerians, even Africans, go to school to study what they never use or what they are never even interested about. We are sure. probably influenced by our parents or we are influenced by society or we just watch one movie when we are much younger and because of that we went to study this course. So let me use myself as a practical example. But I found that, that I always love to talk. I, I, I tried my hands on many things. You know, after studying anatomy, I tried my hands on real estate. I tried my hands on so many things. But this was something I did. There is something I had to do which is called a passion discovery, right? Okay. And what I had to do is I had to find out what are the natural talents I have. And I listed many of them. I found out that I like to talk. I found out that, you know, I had a way with people. I found out that I like being around people. And mm. when immediately I was able to do that, the next thing I started to do was that I started leveraging on opportunities that I had. You know, and I started speaking to people. I started seeing the kind of effect it was having. I gathered a little, uh, you know, set of people, started training them, started talking to them did my, you know, like a little test. And I found out that I many people were really interested in what I had to offer. And before you know it, I set up my own training firm, you know, wow. and, and I was still short steps about that. But one thing that is very important that people actually do not actually realize about right now, like you mentioned about the gift of God is this. I've mentioned in some of our past episodes. See, one thing about passion is this. Passion will always find a way. So even when there's a lockdown, you look for other alternatives. You look mm. for how you're going to leverage on technology. Mm. I have been speaking more than I've been speaking before lockdown, right? Wow. I was not even on TVC before lockdown. How am I on TVC now? How am I wow. able to do what I'm doing? How is it that even, you know, so the question you need to ask yourself is someone who is passionate will always find a way. Because if it is something that you easily lose track of time, if it is something you love doing, if it is something you don't even, you don't even, you know, you will not you mind spending the rest effort. of your life doing mm. Yeah, you don't even need to. No, you. The truth is, the thing about passion is this: even though it comes naturally to you, right? Uh, there's this uh, wise man that said, "It is the gift of a man that makes room for him." It's not the talent, right? So, passion will make you even do the necessary diligent work wow. to fan the flame of your talent, so that it can become a gift, so that it can become a business. You will now start going for courses. You start, you know, getting people like myself, you know, getting consultants, going for, you know, online stuff. You just know, to you know, you know what, Toby. I, I would really love for you to go on because I'm sure you're inspiring more than a, a one person right now about making yes. the best of their passion and actually pursuing it yes. and seeing it even as a source of yes. income. I really must thank you for your time, yes. Uluwato Ali. Thank you so much for your time. Yes. Uh, hoping to have you on the show some of the time as well. Thank you so much. No problem. All okay, right. thank and you so much. Uh, with that, uh, I know for sure that uh, Mike is on standby for social media. Hi, Mike. Okay, so uh, quite a few things are trending today, and uh, incidentally, it's um, Willie Shoinka's birthday. Yes, yeah, so um, uh, quite a number of tweets uh, celebrating uh, the great man. Let's uh, check out a few of them. Let's check out a few of them. Uh, we also um, had some had some some comments on uh, our post. I'll get I'll get to that a little bit later, but uh, hmm. The greatest threat to freedom is the absence of criticism. I like this. I like this. Hmm. Quite interesting. Celebrating Wally Shoenka at 86. Okay. And that's, that's a big one. Now, I like this one. This is from I am, uh, at I am underscore Alfred one who says, I said a tiger does not proclaim his tigritude. Hmm. He pounces. In other words, a tiger does not stand in the forest and say, I am a tiger. Wow. Now, this makes me remember a line uh, for those of you who have seen Game of, Game of Thrones. Um, this is from Tywin Lannister to, um, to Joffrey the king. I uh, said, a king who has to say, I am the king, is not really the king. That's quite interesting there. So, great one, great one. Ways to remember uh, the great uh, Nobel uh, laureate on his birthday, right? So, quite a very cool one there. 
And uh, he's 86 today, of course. Uh, uh, people different from different parts of the world are celebrating him on his 86th birthday, okay? So let's check out uh, your reply to... Okay, a number of you were talking about... Let's see, let me check my mentions now. Mm, okay. Oh, oh there's... Uh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> you will now meet the one I'm reading out to your favorite presenter. I should not read it out myself. Like Yomi said, you know, it's almost like saying who's your favorite kid when you're looking at all your kids. Everybody is, everybody's there. But uh, let's see your thoughts here on, um, okay, this is, uh, this, is, uh, this was uh, concerning our discussion earlier when we had our uh, uh, gist much earlier and says, uh, this is from, okay, let's see the handle now. This is from uh, at Oyebode underscore Paul. Says, I would want to believe so. Someone, okay, that's talking about my take and says, uh, do you belong to your mere max school of thought uh, that posits that there is more to the story? Yeah, a little bit to some, Aspect says I would want to believe so. Someone must have fingered something that must not, but that must not be kept confidential, and by so doing, given the other an edge to whatsoever. Ah, this tweet is a bit confusing. <laughs> I don't know exactly what you were talking about here, but uh, um, yeah, I think that was a response. Right, that was a response to what we have put out earlier. Uh, okay. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you want me to read this one out? Okay. Uh, Oh, okay, this one does not concern that one, so I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't take that, okay? So it's, our, of course, our third anniversary we're going to be celebrating on, um, on Friday. So let us know across uh, what has Wake Up Nigeria been to you, how has it been so far, how has the journey been so far, what do you think about the journey, what could be better, it's our third year anniversary. We'll take a short time out now. We'll be back with our final guest of the show. Welcome back. Yeah, welcome back. Yeah, now, it's been many conversations that we've had on the show today. Yeah, but um, it, it might be nice to note that today is Wale Shoinka's birthday and send wow. a, a birthday to a birthday shout out to him. Uh, he's 86 years old. 86, yes. 86. Mm -hmm. uh, he won the Nobel Prize in 1986. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, very, very cute. So uh, that, that's, uh, that's many years ago. That's mm -hmm. how many years now? Almost 30 years ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, he's done absolutely. I mean, so, a prolific writer, playwright, mm -hmm. uh, novelist, mm -hmm. and of course a dramatist as well. He's, yeah. a, he's, he's an accomplished Some dramatist. Some powerful quotes from him. Yeah. And uh, one of them is this one. Um, a tiger does not procre proclaim his tigritude. He just <laughs> pounces. In yeah. other words, a tiger doesn't stand in the forest and say, I'm, I'm a, a tiger. tiger. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. He has so many powerful quotes like yeah. that. Uh, and his works, his literature works, I, I read quite a few of them uh, in school. And, you know, they just, I, I've always felt like they were ahead of their time. Mm. You know? I, I, I heard his play, um, Moabudu posted on, on her Instagram platform mm. uh, some months ago. His play, The Lion and the Jewel, is going to be made into a Netflix Wow. Uh, Netflix original. Wow, really? The, oh, the Lion wow. and the Jewel. Wow. So that's going to be coming up, mm -hmm. uh, hopefully maybe by next year. Goodness or so. me. Wow. So, I mean, he's, he's leaving Africa <laughs> yeah. a huge legacy, you know, not Very just true. Nigeria, because, I mean, obviously he's the first black um, literary Nobel laureate for Africa. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, that's and, absolutely um, Let me use this opportunity to say that he shares a birthday with my own brother, my sibling. Okay. My only sibling. I only have one. So, <laughs> so your brother's birthday, birthday is today, today as well? Today. Oh, yeah. Okay. July 13th. Yeah. Uh, so happy birthday uh, to Happy him. birthday, Coyote Adilagun. Yes. I love you. All right. So at this point, uh, let's see if we have our guest on the line. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. All right, so we're joined by uh, actor and entrepreneur Michael Godson. Uh, he is someone who uh, has about 10 years uh, in Nollywood and began his career back in 2010. So far, he has featured in, believe it or not, over 100 movies, starting, uh, starring alongside veterans like Peter Doce, Clems, Ohameze, mm. and many others. Yes, yeah, so, and uh, you know, even though he's been in this game for quite some time, you would still think he was one of those youngins. Look how fresh and... <laughs> Looks very and, young uh, and uh, fresh. Yes, yeah, so uh, this guy. Well, it goes way back. <laughs> he does. Now, today we're going to mm -hmm. go down memory lane and, and he's going to let us in on how he juggles running his own agro-processing and commodity trading company 
with filmmaking. Good morning, Mike. Good morning. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Thank uh, you. Good, to, good to have you join us. Uh, typically, what we, what we uh, like to ask our guests is how, how they coped with the COVID-19 mm. uh, lockdown and all of that, mm. and how the easing of, of that is also affecting their business. So talk to us about how you, you coped for about 90 days uh, during this lockdown. <laughs> well, the, the pandemic uh, uh, is actually a bad time for everybody. I mean, um, uh, it was a crazy uh, time to... Uh, you know, sit back and reflect on ourselves and how we, we can move on. Um, as an actor and, uh, you know, a Nollywood actor, basically, it wasn't, it wasn't a good time for everybody. It, it hit the industry badly and uh, it affected every sector. It affected our revenues. It affected uh, filmmaking, movie premieres. And, you know, so it, 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 hit, it hit Nollywood badly. And I, I tell people that Nollywood is a big business. And once you're not making money, you're out of business. So at, at, at some point, nobody was making money. But then again, we have to find a way around this. And uh, we have to take our, you know, the right measures to ensure that we, we, we stay safe. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So now, uh, the way we're looking at you now, it doesn't look like this uh, COVID thing hits you <laughs> at all. Like, it's just, uh, it doesn't. So, like, I see this guy. So, talk about your agro business a little. Um, so, since <clears throat> your, the Nollywood side was obviously affected, were you able to keep your business right. going during the lockdown? Um, like, like I said, I mean, it's actually a bad time for everybody. Um, I, I run uh, a commodity trading company, uh, apart from being an actor. Uh, that's another part of me that uh, don't, uh, you know, don't make it to the media. Um, but then again, the pandemic affected businesses uh, uh, just like mine. Uh, I had issues supplying products to you know, different companies and, uh, because of the lockdown. And um, I mean, then again, we, we had to, you know, self-isolate and social distance in order to, you know, keep the curve uh, low. So, so yeah, it, it affected businesses and mine was included as well. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so now that it's been gradually lifted and you know, things are getting back into shape, flights resumed last week. Uh, were, were there movie premieres that you, uh, movies that were due to be out over the past few months? that you were in that are going to be out in the coming weeks? Uh, well, I mean, things are gradually getting back to normal. And um, I feel even, even uh, as we're trying to go back to our normal filmmaking, we also have to be very careful because the pandemic is still very much around. So uh, we just started, uh, like I've been on different sets, like a few sets, uh, but then again, we're still very scared. We're taking the right measures, uh, you know, to ensure that we don't uh, contact the virus, yeah, because it doesn't show on anybody's face. Uh, so we're trying to get back to normal. So right now, movie premieres are not, uh, I haven't heard of anyone yet, so, but we're trying to get back to normal. Yeah. yeah. All right. I'm wondering, I'm wondering um, what sort of measures you're going to put in place when you eventually get back on set. So we've spoken with quite a few actors, and there's some things they say they will not do anymore especially when it comes to the uh, love scenes and romance moments in movies so do you have fears or anxiety about doing those things uh well <clears throat> as an actor you're, you're supposed to uh you're supposed to do what the script says uh, but then again the pandemic is very very scary and um i i'm just going to be careful I'm just going to speak for myself. I'm just, going to be, I'm just going to be very careful, yeah, because it's scary. The numbers are going up every day, uh, and sometimes it's just very, very, very scary. So on set, we usually uh, uh, take uh, uh, temperatures of people to ensure that everybody has a low temperature and nobody's sick, and we social distance as well. We don't really come close to each other. Uh, we wear our face masks and and all of that, we sanitize our hands. So we've been taking the right measures to ensure that everybody uh, stays safe, yeah. Uh, Michael Godson, thank you so much uh, 
for, for joining us this morning. We, yeah. we, uh, it took us a while to try to connect. Yeah. Uh, so we, we're not able to ask you all the questions we wanted to. But we're looking forward to, uh, to, to your new projects coming for the rest of the year. Yeah. So just keep us, keep us posted. And, uh, you know, we'll probably bring you on our set once, once uh, everything is back to normal here. Yes, indeed. Oh, thank, thank you very much. Thank you for, for having me. I'm, I'm sorry about the, the connection. I mean, you know, we're no, 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 not a problem at all. Not a problem. It's a, it's, it's a pleasure having you on a Monday, mm. starting our week off with you. All righty. Thank you very now, much. we would have been inviting him to the kitchen if he was here, yep. but he's not. So we're just going to make our way there ourselves. Don't and you just like that you don't have to tiptoe? Uh, yeah, well, I, I, I wore the right careful. shoes this time. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you have so much glee in your voice? Because of the sweetness and goodness that is in front of us. Okay, Fancy so I'm that. seeing oats, Woo! I'm seeing uh, mm. raisins. Let's see how many of these you can make out. Uh, uh, what grapes. else? Uh, what's, uh -huh. Are these almonds? Yes, yeah. you got it. Yeah. You know. <laughs> okay, guys, thank you so much for joining us in the kitchen. Chef Tito has been really busy at work uh, baking this uh, delicious goodness for us. Go ahead, uh, go ahead. It's called uh, the Raisins Baked, baked Oatmeal. oatmeal. Okay. okay. Mm. So she's going to slice a bit of it for us. Mm. Now, there yeah. are different ways you can eat this. Uh, you mentioned the fact that it's possible for you to bake it a bit and eat it mm -hmm. hot. Mm. Or yeah. you let it yeah. bake and thicken. So we are doing it halfway. Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, halfway. Halfway, yeah. yeah. So, so we oh, have it like a pudding. Yes, like this a pudding. Is breakfast. That's what I'm seeing. Yeah. Breakfast. And I'm seeing something like very it. healthy as well. Okay, Everything well, so about sure. it is healthy. There's no sugar. So while, while she's uh, while she's working that pudding oh, out nice. on the plate, uh, we're going to be rounding off the show gradually. Yeah. Uh, thank you to uh, all our guests for joining us today. Uh, Larry Olushola. Thank Olua you. Toby Ali. And uh, Michael Godson joining yeah. us on the show. It's a great so start much. to the week. And of course, the number three is very important to us this week on Wake Up Nigeria. We are celebrating our third anniversary on Friday. So, hey, you want to be part of that particular show. Ah, uh, there's that. Is that caramel that you're putting on that thing? It's black corn syrup. What is that? Dark okay, give, corn give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. No, the plate, the plate. Oh, you weren't <laughs> specifying. So there you what? go. What? There you go. Thank Try you. It. I have to taste this. Dark. Give me so. before they cut us off. Let me just tell you. Ah, uh, there, there it is. Mm. Mm. Then look at that steamy. No words. No words. Back to come on. Yeah. Chef, well done. Well Much done. Much love, everybody. Good job. Well done, Try this at home. Mm. It's really good. Really, really good. See you again tomorrow morning, 6 a.m. People. Bye bye. Bye bye. 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 bye.